Well, joining us for more analysis from Beijing is Einar Tangen. He's a political and economic affairs commentator. Uh, Einar, good morning to you. Uh, what do you make of the, the timing of all of this? Well, Roy, uh, North Korea is clearly trying to send a message that it will not be marginalized and that uh, they want the, uh, you know, something. Uh, I, I would imagine that they want the, the talks to restart. Now, keep in mind, this uh, gives them a full uh, set of uh, nuclear options. They have a submarine-launched missile. They have a ballistic missile, which they say can reach the United States. And now a cruise missile, which puts, um, if it was 1,500 kilometers, it puts both Beijing and Tokyo uh, within its particular range. The state media suggests that Pyongyang spent the last two years developing these long-range missiles. That means it, it would have started around the time that Donald Trump was meeting Kim Jong-un at the DMZ or, or shortly after. What does that tell you about what was happening back then? Well, it, it makes it clear that, that that was more theater than reality and that uh, jumping back and forth across the line it would, was no substitute for, um, you know, having a real strategic um, objective and ability to achieve it between the U.S. and DPRK. Uh, obviously, Young Kim did not believe that anything was uh, substantial was going to happen in those talks. Otherwise, he would have put those on hold. You mentioned the uh, capacities of these missiles, the short-range ones. Uh, they're obviously a concern for East Asian countries like South Korea and Japan. The long-range cruise missiles, uh, they fly low. They're harder to detect, and, and they travel much further, obviously. How much of an escalation do you think Washington will see this as, and what sort of response do you think it will elicit from the Biden administration? Well, a cruise missile, uh, except for its ability to reach U.S. bases in Japan and also uh, Korea, is not as much of a threat as it is to uh, the neighbors. Um, and there's concern about any kind of escalation or an arms race. Uh, will uh, South Korea and Japan and other nations decide that they need the nuclear option? Uh, but keep in mind, this also puts Beijing uh, squarely uh, within that range. Of about, it's only 1,000 kilometers from the North Korean border to uh, Beijing. So this will also be of great concern to um, China. It's not that they couldn't be reached before. But obviously, uh, something like this, which is a strategic threat, uh, will be uh, something that's on the table. In the past, the U.S. has tried to work with Beijing uh, in dealing with uh, Pyongyang. Given current U.S.-China relations, how effective or likely do you think that will be? Well, there doesn't seem to be a strategy to deal with North Korea. I mean, North Korea is, is seeking assurances uh, in order to, to end the war and do all of these things to, to in essence, um, uh, you know, be guaranteed that they will not be bothered. They're also looking for some sort of economic package. Uh, it's doubtful that the U.S. can politically uh, meet those objectives at this time. There was an article just for the announcement of these uh, successful middle, missile tests by Voice of America, and they were indicating that they believed that Biden was adopting strategic patience towards uh, North Korea. Uh, this uh, particular missile launch is going to uh, put that uh, policy um, in question.